Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. We brought the LS MT357 into our local LS dealer, Sandy Lake Implement, for our 50 hour service. But more importantly, we're gonna be making some huge upgrades to this machine that's gonna make it way more usable and way more enjoyable to run. Rich, you wanna give us a quick rundown of what we're gonna be doing to this machine aside from the 50 hour service? Yeah, we're gonna install the top link, uh, hydraulic top link and tilt unit. Uh, see how that goes. Yep. It's a long unit, uh, first one we've installed uh, on the LS tractor, so actually, we'll see what, how that goes. What they were telling me is this is the first unit ever made by WR Long for the hydraulic top and tilt kit, and it took a couple weeks. They actually processed and developed it for this tractor, and now they've tested it, it's approved, and they're going to now be offering it for this tractor going forward. And then in addition to the hydraulic and top and tilt kit, we're also doing a third function on the front so we can run things like grapples and postal diggers and things like that off the front. So anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to not slow him down as much as I can with the filming, but filming always takes longer. So let's get to it. Yeah, let's do it. So this is the kit, uh, it comes like this, out of the box, you get your four fittings, uh, two for each cylinder action, obviously. And then uh, for LS comes with the proper quick coupler. And then these will go into the cylinder these go into the quick coupler, mount your uh, pins, and uh, should be fairly simple. Let's go with the tilt first. I'm going to take that bolt out. Sometimes you need a little help there. There we go. So basically we're just swapping out manual turnbuckle cylinders for hydraulic cylinders. That way we can adjust all this stuff on the fly from the seat of the cab and not have to get out to change the angle of a box blade or a brush hog or finish mower or anything like that. So we'll just go in from the top there. You can turn these up if you want, but that's a nice bend there. So the rear remotes on this machine, there's one that's a detent and one that's a spring valve return. And we were trying to figure out which one would make sense to put into which port. And with all this being, you know, quick connect, it's easy enough just to change them. So we'll just throw them in and, you know, after running it for a couple times of the box blade, we'll see which one I like better and adjust from there. So to put the third function in, this is the kit, comes in two boxes. You get the hoses, uh, new tubing, then you get the mount plate that goes on the cross member of your loader, uh, quick connects, everything's here for it. You get wiring harness, a joystick, uh, gets replaced. Then there's a new valve. It's going to go on to the loader valve which has got an expandable loader valve. And in the back side here, there's a, a plate that I'll, we'll have to take off and install the 
uh, directional control valve. So this piece is going to come off. Then we'll put this piece on. It's got the grommets for the uh, quick connect bracket. Yep. These are the hydraulic lines. I'll get mine in here. That clamp in. Gonna get a longer bolt. It goes all the way down. And I'll just leave them loose until after I get all my fittings tight because the wrenches are really hard to get in. I generally do like three wraps on there. it whichever one you want. So we're going to take the console off, uh, put a little tab on each side, just pop it out of there, careful not to break them. Uh, come out fairly easily. And there's going to be another one back here. You're surprisingly comfortable on camera. Usually whenever I get people uh, doing videos and stuff like this, they, they get super they nervous. Up. They, they get nervous and yeah. Yeah, I'm used to having <laughs> a large crew working for me. Yeah. I worked offshore oil for 24 years. I was in charge of the whole vessel, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a. Little YouTube camera doesn't intimidate you. No. Nah. <laughs> So what's going to happen is I have to take this part of the console off also. I'll have to take these grips off. Because what they've done is uh, they run the wire back here to make the connection instead of running it here. Because that's the only reason I'll have to take this off is to get to the connection. Gotcha. But, off of that. And we got to take that off. And take the jam nut off here. Not generally too tight on there. Never seen the inside of the uh, loader valve control. Pretty oh, interesting. No. no, pretty interesting to see. So this one got to come off. And when you put the other, the new one on, you have to be real careful because there's some small wires going down into it. Ah, uh, yeah. The wires come down out this hole here. So, now this is a true third function. This and is a live third function, yeah. You can also get just a diverter valve, which you, you have to flip a switch and then you use your curl function. Your curl function, yeah. Basically just switches your curl function from curling the bucket to running your third function. Exactly, yeah. And that's gonna is, run off of your battery. It'll be live all the time, but yeah. uh, with the key on or off. Yes, this one is the way to go, honestly. Yeah, that would drive me nuts to I mean, I, a lot of times I'm using lift, curl, and especially if I'm running a grapple, like if I'm picking up a log, yeah. lift, curl, and closing or opening the grapple. At the same time. Yeah. Yeah, diverter valve would not work for, for me. I want to make sure that wire is not catching on stuff. I'll leave a little slack up in here so that 
all the functions can go. Yep. I'll tie it down here once I make this connection. grommet here and you've got to take these 10 millimeter so that comes out it's going to go into the tractor like this and that goes in and that is your water and mouse block i guess okay so but the only thing i can really do with it once i run this cable through it's so big that i just have to i just cut the whole section out of the center and then it, it makes a very small opening and then this covers it up also now this is going to be your control cable to go from your joystick to that connector uh, and then down to your solenoid valve. You have two white wires and a green and here you have a black, white and green. So you're going to be looking for the white black is going to go to the black. And make sure you got a good good snap on there in nice and tight do you have to crimp those or are they not not they're all ready to go they're okay. crimped and everything uh, you just need to make sure they're pushed together real well okay so this is your solenoid valve Gonna have a connection on each side. This pivots so you can reposition it uh, for your magnet. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I can show you right here, is there's, on that loader valve, there's a, a cap. And we'll take that cap off and put this solenoid valve on. Okay. There's gonna be an O-ring for each groove. It's gonna be in the solenoid valve side. Um, there's also a spool piece that we have to put in is going to go in to the loader valve uh, it'll go in like this that one's on the back so but one way to tell is the threads will be on the outside okay and if you need to pull it out you can put a bolt in there or something yep because you won't be able to reach it once it goes in that'll plug this also swivels so it gives you a real nice range of motion to position your cables out of harm's way because it's already down pretty low on the tractor. So, turn on the key. so you hear it clicking. So electrically we're good. So we're going to take this plate off for your expandable valve. So that's just blanking plate here. That's the one we showed earlier. Yep, that's the one I showed you earlier. Now there's an O-ring groove cut in all of these ports. So you wanna make sure those O-rings are still there. I'm gonna put this full in here. Again, it's gonna go with the threads out. I'll put that in that large port. I'm going to tighten the jam nuts up real good. Random holes. The front one I'll put straight. Connect it. And we'll have to 
position these so that the hose has got a nice laminar flow. And then it's going to go here. And the back side here. So what I'm trying to do is protect the hoses from getting hit with anything as much as I can. But I also want them to be able to come off without any wrenches or anything. Right. We're pretty much done with the top and tilt. Uh, the third function is almost done. We'll go back through, make sure everything's tight. Then in the meantime, we'll drain the oil from the engine for our 50 hour service. There's gonna be two drains, one on each side of your drain pan. There's one here, there's gonna be one on the other side. That is bad technique. Your hand is not a hammer. We'll put this one back in. That should be. Nothing like having motor oil on tap, right? Right. <laughs> So which filter is this one? This is the hydraulic filter. Okay. And that's under the right side of the tractor. There we go. So this is the hydrostatic filter and this is on the left side of the tractor. Yeah. All right, so the top and tilt kit is done. The third function is done. All of the filters and fluids that needed changed and replaced are done. Uh, Rich is just gonna quickly go over the rest of what's on the 50 hour service of what you have to check. It's just kind of a checklist of uh, remain, remaining items that need to be gone over.
right guys, so we just got back from Sandy Lake Implement. 50 hour service is done. We should be good for another 200 plus hours. We've got our third function, which as many of you guys know who have watched the channel for any length of time, we've had a third function on our Coyote for years. The main purpose for that is running a grapple, but you can also run things like a post hole digger and some certain other attachments that require auxiliary hydraulic flow off the front end of your loader. But the one that I have never used before, I've only seen it a handful of times on a couple other tractors on YouTube, I think is very unique and is going to make this tractor so much more useful, especially with an implement like a box blade, is this top and tilt kit. As you guys know, we just got done dozing out the pad for the new building and I kind of got addicted to the bulldozer life. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll ever be in a position to own a bulldozer. This is probably gonna be the closest that I'm going to get to it. So if you're not familiar with the hydraulic top and tilt kit, let me show you how it's going to transform the ordinary pull behind box blade. Sadie. So hopefully after that quick demonstration, that gives you guys an idea of how useful this is going to be. Again, I equate it to a six-way dozer blade. Uh, it's a little bit different though. A dozer blade has six functions, up, down, tilt left, tilt right, angle left, angle right. This has six functions, but it's up, down, tilt left, tilt right and then it's going to pitch forward or pitch back, which is going to allow you to either bite into the ground harder or do more of a smoothing action by tilting the blade under and just kind of back dragging with the blade. So again, it's kind of like a dozer, not really. Obviously, you know, bulldozers start out at about 18,000 pounds. This is only 6,000 pounds. So this is only a third the size of a, the smallest dozers out there. Um, and it's on wheels instead of tracks. But I'll tell you what, this thing can push for uh, its size and weight. So I'm really looking forward to giving this a run. This is just kind of an introduction showing you what's all involved with the install. Um, the top and tilt kit, I think I probably could have done that myself. That was very easy. As long as you already have the rear remotes installed, uh, changing out the manual cylinders for the hydraulic cylinders and hooking up the hoses, that was no big deal. Uh, the third function, that's something I probably wouldn't want to tackle myself. I was glad to have the uh, Sandy Lake implement installing that. That was a lot more involved. Speaking of which, uh, if you're looking for a good LS dealer, Sandy Lake implement, I can't say enough good things about them. It's a small family run dealership. You can tell that your business really means something to them. And I have a feeling that that's the kind of dealership that when you walk in the door, they remember your name. So Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really looking forward to actually trying this thing out here in the near future, maybe cutting some trails in back in the woods with this uh, angle blade. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.